presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are San Diego. Maybe the best tailgating in the major leagues is outside Miller Park in Milwaukee. It's the finale of the series, the finale of the road trip. The Padres and Brewers are next. Swinging a hot bat last night, a triple shy of the cycle. An amazing night for the Padres. They come away with a win and extras. They'll try to win the series today. It's game four of the four game series. Welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo along with Mark Sweeney. Welcome to Padres Baseball. Fun night last night for the Padres as it worked out a long night in 12 innings. They win it 8-7. to seven. And last night, Mark, they did it with the long ball. Well, it was very important to get off to a good start offensively. They knew they had to use a lot of relievers. So offensively, they did it with the long ball, as you said, Don. And you can see going with Will Myers and going the opposite way was a great sight. These two have struggled in this road trip. Well, last night they broke out the bats. Then the tie ball game and Derek Norris with a huge at bat against a hanging changeup got them started in the 12th. Melvin Upton Jr. an insurance run, which really became the most important run of the night. That was a huge blast. Last night was fun. Today, Cesar Vargas will try to go deep into this game. See Cesar Vargas the last time out. He's lost his last two starts, but against the Cubs in that very good lineup, he struggled getting the first strike. Tonight, he has to be very aggressive. Look for him to be much more aggressive in the strike zone the first two pitches and have good su success with that cutter. Cesar could have had a win already, does not. He'll be looking for that first Major League win today. Well, Will Myers came out of the lineup last night in last night's game with some calf problems. He's back in the lineup. We'll get an update on him from Julie Alexandria. We come back to Milwaukee right after this. I have to be able to Padres and Brewers about to get underway. 
Well, a very scary moment for first baseman Will Myers, who came out of the game in the ninth inning in last night's extra inning contest. It later revealed itself that he had a left calf cramp. He explained exactly what happened on the Bates paths after the game. Running down the line, I felt it kind of catch just a little bit, nothing crazy. And, uh, you know, in that situation right there, I have to be able to score on a base hit or a double in the gap. And, uh, you know, with the way it was feeling, we decided that it might not be best for me to run right there. But uh, it was only in that type of situation uh, where I had to score in the gap. If it was, uh, if we were up two runs, I would have finished that game at first base. Uh, but yeah, it was just one of those precautionary moves. He did a few running drills today just to make sure that it was sound. The training staff also said he was good to go. He's feeling very strong about it, so good news there. Coming up, Padres and Brewers about to get underway for game four of the four-game set. It's the finale in just a moment. San Diego presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by Infinity. Visit your local San Diego area Infinity retailer for test drive today. By Petco, your complete pet store. By Kaiser Permanente, thrive. And by Pinnacle on the Park, make your new home here. Visit PinnacleOnThePark.com for details. A better day outside here at Miller Park as the fans are here for the finale of this four game series between the Padres and the Brewers. The roof is closed as we get it started today. Still on the chilly side, but check out the four man umpiring crew in this game. Ben May has got the plate calling the balls and strikes. That's the crew chief. He's Jeff Nelson. He's at first base. Laz Diaz at second base. And Manny Gonzalez is the umpire at third. Late change just before the ball game. Will Myers coming out of the Padres lineup. Their lineup is brought to you by Toyota. Here is the new lineup. Jankowski is in center with Derek Norris doing the catching. Matt Kemp is in right. Brett Wallace at first base. Now instead of Myers, Melvin Upton Jr. is in left with Alexei Ramirez at shortstop. Jose Perella inserted into second base with Adam Rosales at third 
And Cesar Vargas is the pitcher batting out of the ninth spot. So a late change for Andy Green. The Brewers scouting report brought to you by UC San Diego Health. And for Zach Davies, the 23 year old is making his sixth start. Works very quickly, gets the ball and throws it. And he's a finesse pitcher, not power arm, but loves his changeup. He falls in love with that pitch off of that fastball. Let's check out the Brewers defensively in behind Davies, brought to you by Renovation Realty. Alex Presley in left with Kirk Neuenheis in center, Ramon Flores in right. Third to first, it's Hernan Perez, Jonathan Villar, Scooter Jeanette, and Chris Carter, with Jonathan Lucroy doing the catching for Zach Davies. Now Jankowski about to lead it off here for the Padres, and apparently Will Myers, who was okay and good to go right up till. Just a few moments ago, pulls himself out of the lineup. We'll yeah. have to get an update on that. Well, we heard Julie's report, and he sounded like everything was a okay. And you wonder about those quick movements, and then especially the calf injury. That's last night. Felt a little bit of tightness. Felt like it grabbed him a little bit. But unfortunately for the Padres, they're going to have to grind it out again today. You got John Jay, who only came in to pinch run last night, but been out the last couple of games, kind of banged up. And Trying to get him to the off day tomorrow and get another day to rest. That's probably probably the important thing. If everything is getting to tomorrow, hopefully with a W today for the pods. That includes getting the bullpen some rest after last night's long game. And of course you had the day night doubleheader mixed in as part of this road trip in Chicago. But it's all good so far for the Padres. Here's pitch number one of the day, and it is ball one. So Travis Jankowski leading it off and in center field again for Jay. Into his 28th game of the year, 208 average. And the speedster takes a strike. Padres saw a 6 2 lead go by the boards and then won it in 12. And it was the long ball that got it done last night. It's only 49 degrees outside, largely the reason the roof is closed inside here at Miller Park for. The finale of this series. Swing and a miss, and Jankowski strikes out on the fastball, out number one. Let's take a look at the keys to the game brought to you by the San Diego Honda dealers. And for the Padres today, finish off a very successful road trip so far, four and two on the road. And also, Vargas needs to get his first win. He has pitched well enough to get a his first win already. Last time out against Chicago Cubs, gave up ten hits. Last night's hero Derek Norris back in the lineup. He played first base last night when Myers left. And back at his more familiar catching spot today. All signs are good on that hand that got hit in the first game of the series. Well, I was surprised he took batting practice yesterday. That was a good sign. Then inserted in the game and a huge home run. Twelfth inning of last night's game. And a blast, Capuano knew it right away after it was unloaded. So did Norris. Norris, it was his third home run of the year. On the ground towards short, VR was playing over there. And his sidearm toss just in time to get Norris two down. Well, as we said in the notes, Davies works very quickly, but he's a strike thrower. Sometimes those finesse guys can really frustrate you with their location and consistently working down in the strike zone. Here's Matt Kemp. Great night last night, a triple shy of hitting for the cycle. Padres going back to back, not only in the 12th inning, but they also did it in the fifth last night as part of their win. Kemp now with nine home runs on the year. Stack it up on the left side defensively in the shift against Kemp. And a swing and a miss. It's only been at 90, but as you mentioned, it's been well placed. Locates on all quadrants of the strike zone, not just down, but he'll elevate at times and he falls in love with that changeup, especially the left handed hitters. That one runs away. Seems like he's been ahead of everybody so far. Jankowski, Norris, and now Kemp. Yeah. 
on the ground down the third baseline. Hernan Perez will get it there in plenty of time and down in order of the Padres in the first. Brewers are coming up from Milwaukee. the first inning the Brewers are coming up in the bottom of the first inning let's check out that Brewers starting lineup brought to you by Hyundai Jonathan VR leads it off at shortstop with Scooter Jeanette at second base Jonathan Lucroy does the catching with Chris Carter at first Kirk Neuenheis is in center field with Alex Presley in left Fernand Perez at third base and Ramon Flores in right Zach Davies does the pitching and bats ninth. Here is Cesar Vargas coming in 0 and 2. Saw Hank Aaron outside the ballpark, the statue here at Miller Park. Hammer and Hank. Jonathan VR hitting just under 300 at 296 and stung a few balls in last night's game. Yeah, it looked very comfortable at the bat, very patient at the top of the order. We'll take some pitches. Look at the grass at third is Rosales in case. Well, Vargas has got to find a way to get deep into this game, and that has been a problem for him. He has yet to throw 100 pitches in any start so far yet in the big leagues. In fact, the most he has thrown is 92 pitches, and that was last time out. Took the loss at Chicago against the Cubs. On the ground, foul, and in some pain at the plate is VR. Time now for the scouting report of Cesar Vargas. Think about what he has to do. It's all about getting that win. He needs to bounce back out because the last time he was not in the strike zone early, got into too many hitters counts. Got to trust Derek Norris today. They work very well together. That cutter comes into play, and I think today, first two pitches, one has to be a strike just to set up all his secondary stuff. Line to right, Kent going back and over the wrong shoulder and ends up over his head. The second goes VR, and he'll pull it up around second base. Kemp got over the wrong shoulder and it costs him because he can't get back in time up over his head. Well, two strike hitting by VR and it's a curveball, hanging curveball. And Matt Kemp gets turned around in right field. It's all about the first step when it comes down to it. He turns left and then has to go back the other way. That line drives hit over his head. Not well played well in right field. So VR stands at second base, leadoff double here in the last half of the first inning, and there's Scooter Jeanette. 
a good series four home runs five RBI's on the year. Take strike one. Jeanette getting his third start of the series all at second base. Shows bunt pulls it back and takes a ball outside. Twentieth start of the year for him at second base. Spent some time on the DL with the right oblique tightness earlier in the year. Reinstated last Thursday. And the bunt foul. More disciplined at the plate has 11 walks in 84 plate appearances compared to just 12 walks and 391 of them last year. Well, Don, he came up to the big leagues and Ricky Weeks was the starting second baseman. They platooned because Weeks was struggling at the time and really showed very well in that platoon role. Weeks, of course, since has moved on to the Arizona Diamondbacks. It's a talented young man and knows how to construct an at bat, has a good plan of attack, but at times wants to power the baseball and get big. Craig but, Council at the helm. And you know, Craig Council understands that role. He's been a platoon guy, he's been an everyday guy. So he gets punched out looking in that backdoor cutter. Let's check out the Padres defensively, brought to you by your San Diego County Ford dealers. Melvin up to junior in left field with Travis Jankowski in center Matt Kemp around in right third to first Adam Rosales Alexei Ramirez Jose Perella and Brett Wallace with Derek Norris doing the catching for Cesar Vargas. Jeanette strikes out and that brings up Jonathan Lucroy. Ryan Braun out of the lineup again today and word is it is a wrist problem for Braun not bad enough to put him on the DL but not good enough to have him pinch hit at any point last night and not back in the lineup today. Well we've talked about Ryan Braun and how successful he's been for the Brewers offense. He's been everything with Jonathan Lucroy and Ryan Braun. Those are the two big trade pieces if you're looking for the Brewers down the road. And what direction this organization goes. On the ground back to Vargas got the runner at second hung up and he is safe for the first he is safe. A juggle at first base by Wallace everybody safe. Well, I think this was the inexperience of Cesar Vargas. Does the right thing when he feels he looks that runner back because he makes a move towards third base. But as he's going back get the out at first. Unfortunately for the Padres they don't get. Either end of that out Wallace tries to pick in the dirt. Padres trying to see if they're going to challenge this either one of them. And the one at second may have been closer than the one at first because of the juggle. And McGuire's shaking his head. No challenge. Two on, one away. You see him going to second base, and VR just under the tag as that right hand goes into second base. Two on, one out. Chris Carter batting in the cleanup spot. And badly fooled on that. Carter came off the bench in last night's game. Ten home runs on the year to go along with the 24 runs batted in. Back at first base for Craig Council and the Brewers. This is what's available on the bench and not so sure Ryan Braun is available as we found out last night with a wrist injury. Aaron Hill getting the day off so he's available. After starting the first three games of the series. Oh. 
Vargas behind Carter, two and one. Thirty seventh game of the year for Chris Carter. And he couldn't hold up. It's a big swing, and when he gets it started, tough to hold up. Two and two. The yard second, Lou Croy at first with one out. Just a 118 average with runners in scoring position. Does have a home run and has driven in 10. No, Don, that, re that really shows the value of Ryan Braun. He has been so successful with runners in scoring position. Then you see Chris Carter in the middle of the order with that average runners in scoring position. Just doesn't make sense. Got to have the middle of the order bats produce in RBI situations. Carter strikes out takes with him the second strikeout for Vargas went looking two down on the starts you see Vargas vary the shape of that cutter it's a nice little cutter on the outside part of the plate and he's shown both sides Carter goes down looking first and second two down Kirk Neuenheis coming up center fielder at 288 with a home run 12 runs bad in it 33rd game that he has appeared in 17th start in center is far preferred home this year hitting at 378 to Miller Park in fact a career 404 hitter at home. Late and it's 0 and 2. Saw Neuenheis last night, his first two at bats, very productive, going the other way for a double in the left center gap, then going the other way for a single, and later in the game, pulling a double down the right field line. It shows you the numbers at home. He's seeing it well here. Swing and a miss, and Vargas strikes his way out of what could have been a tough inning. Done with one from Milwaukee without a score. Brewers threaten, but do not score. as we head to the top of the second. Well, first baseman Will Myers was a late scratch in today's game. He was experiencing left forearm tightness just prior to the game. Now, this is unrelated, obviously, to the left calf cramp, which resulted in him exiting the game last night in the ninth inning. The Padres, in a roster move, have decided to call up from AAA El Paso, Tehran Guerrero, and send down Lionel Campos today. And guys, at this point, there are eight, count them, eight Padres on the disabled list, four infielders, 
four pitchers. Andy Green telling me before the game, he said he doesn't think that there is a team in the major leagues right now who is more in need of an off day than the Padres. All right, Julie, thank you very much. Oh. What is going on, Mark Sweeney? Well, you know what? It, it, Andy Green understands the importance of needing an off day, but when you come down to it, you're dealing with adversity throughout the big leagues. And with a 162 game season, you know you're going to deal with that one way or the other. And this is a tough stretch for the Padres. You're going to have to grind it out. But fortunately, they're playing their best ball. It's the amazing part about it. You got all these guys on the DL, you know, a lot of your regulars, you got all kinds of pitching problems, and they're getting it done. Two out of three from the best team in the major leagues to this point, the Cubs to begin the series. Fly ball, sky down the left field line off the bat. Of Wallace and that'll end up back into the seats. Well, you think of it too, Don. I mean, you're building character and also opportunities for the guys that needed at bats. Brett Wallace is one of those guys that needs at bats. Typically, his role is coming off the bench to get big hits, but getting his timing and rhythm early in the year might benefit this club as the game goes on. Shift on for him on the right side as he will strike out a high strike and Wallace. Was about to toss the bat and head to first base. Gets the bad news from Ben May. Well, Zach Davies has seen the location on all quadrants, and this two seamer comes back. Pretty good pitching by the right hander. Second strikeout. He's retired the first four Padres that he's faced today. And it brings up Melvin Upton Jr. Swinging a hot bat. 282, five homers, 16 runs batted in. Season high four hits in last night's game. Reached base five times. This is 15th game of the month and hit a 357 so far in the month of May. Zach Davies 23 years of age and that one is fouled off He's from the same hometown as Chicago Cubs lefty John Lester. Well got acquired for Gerardo Parra last July. I remember Buck Showalter talking about Zach Davies. They he loved this young man. You see his stature. Only six feet 155. Looks like he's about 10 years old. Yeah he looks like the bat boy. <laughs> But obviously throwing two seamers the curveball and a command guy that can really frustrate you different looks. Up and off balance strikes out that's three now and back to back here for Davies. The arsenal for Davies. Fastball changeup and heavy on the changeup as we just saw. The curveball and cutter. Different looks, different eye levels, but he knows how to pitch. Two down, five in a row, retired by Davies to start the day. There's Alexei Ramirez in his 39th game of possible 39. He is every day. And he oh. takes strike one. Games he has not started. He has found a way to get in. Yeah, he loves to play the game, and you have to have guys on that roster. Some people might say, well, doesn't everyone love playing the game? Well, there's also guys that take their days off and they're fine with it because there's a lot of platoons in the game of baseball these days. Strike three call. Wallace, Upton, and Ramirez all down by way of the K with scoreless.
Moments in All-Star history brought to you by Geico. 1999's All-Star game, Pedro Martinez strikes out the first five batters. Martinez's victims were Barry Larkin, Larry Walker, Sammy Sosa in the first inning, then Mark McGuire and Jeff Bagwell in the second. Martinez became the first pitcher in All-Star history to strike out the game's first three batters. He also tied an American League All-Star record, shared in part by another member of the Red Sox, Dick Raditz, the monster. That was one of my favorite All-Star games up in Boston. Ted Williams bringing him out and seeing the admiration of so many of the current players going over to the golf cart spending some time with them and then you see Pedro lighten it up Tony Gwynn a big part of that too and going to see Ted Williams this one is in the air to left field as Upton will get there for the first out of the inning well, let me ask you this was it one of your favorites because you're from Boston well that that had <laughs> that had different meaning but I, yeah. I just love how they had the history of the game they blended that in obviously Ted Williams a huge part of the history of this game yeah. but then just seeing watching their faces you saw Mark McGuire going over obviously Tony Gwynn was special about the San Diego connection mm -hmm. it, it just was very magical and then you saw Pedro go out there what a performance he put on against pretty good hitters as well I have to say that he is the best that I've seen in, in my career having the chance to watch him pitch Every fifth day it was pretty special always an event anytime Pedro took the ball you know what I always say to people and that's one of the common questions to us who is the most dangerous pitcher who do you who do you fear the most Pedro is an easy answer and it wasn't I, I never faced him when he was in the American League when he was in Montreal it seemed like every single night looked like that all-star game he he was very much more intense as he got older he backed off a little bit even though he had that intensity I think he calmed himself down, but what a pitcher. Swing and a miss. He could be mean. One of the nicest guys in the world the other four days, but when he was out there, he could get nasty. I love that intimidation factor that he always had, that edge that he could he could put one in your ribs. And obviously he was 155 pounds <laughs> soaking wet. Yeah. Did he go? No. We'll check with Jeff Nelson, the first base umpire, and it evens at two and two to Hernan Perez. Well, what an army had in the Bugs Bunny change up. He'd embarrass you with all of his pitches. Two two pitch. You know what's interesting too. You think about Pedro Martinez. I got a lot of my starts against him because. Did you? Hey, those guys <laughs> came up with some yeah. cramps, some strains yeah. right before they saw Pedro in there. The, you're facing him next. Go get him, Sweeney. Grounder by the mound, and that's going to find its way into center field. Hernan Perez has got a one out single. Once it got by Vargas, he was ticketed for center. So one out, and Hernan Perez at first base, second hit off Vargas. And it brings up Ramon Flores. Flores batting out of the eighth spot. Saw him come off the bench last night. Gets a start in right field today, giving Domingo Santana the day off. Pitcher Davies on deck, so be careful here with Flores. Picks up that outside corner. He's having a lot of success on that arm side with that backdoor cutter to left handed hitters. The 33rd game that Flores has appeared in, only 19 of them have been starts for him. For the first and crossing over to get back is Perez. Flores coming over from the Yankees. It's a 1 1 pitch. On the ground by the dive of Rosales at third base. Heading first to third is Perez. Going to second base is Flores. And he was thinking double out of the gate there. Upton kind of took a look towards third, but never looked at second. And 
Flores just aggressively gets the second base with what should have probably been just a single. We see Norris set up on the inside part. This leaks over the outside. But good hitting by Flores taking the pitch where it is delivered by Rosales. And to your point, Don, I was surprised. I thought Upton was immediately going to go to second base. Well, Flores, because of that throw going into third, easily into second. Now Vargas in a mess here with runners at second and third, one out, infield in all the way around. And Davies, the pitcher, bats now. And a swing and a miss. He has an outfielder when you have that single, you try to hold that runner to a single just to keep that double play in order. See the infield in with one out. Davies squaring on a safety squeeze and it's 0 and 2. Yeah, the Padres are thinking just the same. Brett Wallace was way in at first base. See him right there just pinching in this area just in case that bun is on. In the dirt gathered by Norris. That base runner at third base. To make sure it didn't get by him. It's Perez at third, Flores at second. No career at the plate, one for 20 for Davies. That's the reason why the Padres are thinking along the lines he might lay one down. 0 for 7 this year. Second year in the big leagues for Davies. He bats with Perez at third, Flores at second, one out. This is pitch 38 for Vargas of his outing. On the ground, left side, it's going to be Ramirez. He's going to get nobody. Found himself watching Perez at third do some dancing, and in the process, Davies is going to reach to load the bases. Well, credit Perez on third base. Just putting that thought in the mind. Watch Ramirez as he comes in on the swinging bunt. He makes a dash towards home, gets the attention of Ramirez. I'll see what they're going to do here. Looks like they're going to back up into the double play formation defensively, where the base is now loaded. And the top of the order, Jonathan VR, the batter. VR takes a strike over the outside corner. By the way, that is ruled a hit. Now four in the game for Milwaukee. Vargas jumped ahead 0-2. Could use something that doesn't include contact right here. Yeah, big thing now is what's that out pitch for Vargas? The R thought about it. Did he go? No. I'll check with Manny Gonzalez, third base umpire. He tried it upstairs, and you can see they are holding up. The owner of a seven game hitting streak coming in. And didn't go. Two and two. Well, again, the check swing on a borderline pitch. Bases filled with Brewers, one out here in the second inning. Back to the mound. Vargas coming home for one. That's all they'll get. They get the lead runner on the force out at the plate. One to two, and they'll take that two down. Well, we've seen this from Vargas, the calmness on the mound. Watch him field his position. And he calmly gets an out at home plate. And I like the decision by Derek Norris, not trying to force the issue. The weak contact, 
going home and playing it like a first baseman get the out. So base is loaded again with two outs and now Scooter Jeanette will have a chance. This is also back to Vargas picks and throws and finds himself out of the jam. Nicely done by Cesar Vargas. We play two without a score from Milwaukee. As we head to the top half of the third inning, one of the heroes of last night's game, no doubt, Brad Hand joins us from the dugout. Brad, how you doing? Good. How about yourself? Doing all right. Last night, you end up going four innings. I know you've done it before, but uh, had to be pretty feel pretty good for yourself coming out of that game and contributing so much last night. Yeah, man, just trying to get as many innings as I could. I know going into the game, we had a bullpen day, so um, you know, just trying to go out there and. Uh, Keep going as long as I could. Brad, throughout your career, you have been both a starter and a reliever. What's the different type of mentality that you take, even knowing yesterday you were going to go into that game after Perdomo, possibly? But, you know, the mentality of a starter versus a reliever? Um, you know, when you're starting, you try to get more quick outs, keep that uh, pitch count down a little bit. Um, in the bullpen, you get, can get thrown right in the fire uh, with runners on, so you got to. Um, you know not 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 too many um, just strikes early in the count you know trying to get outs out of the zone more uh, bullpen that has been very good so far this year you guys seem like a pretty tight unit out there yeah man we've been good all year uh, I mean I joined the team a little late but ever since I've been here we've we've been doing well amazing the number of injuries right now taking place on this team you seen anything like this before and this is unbelievable no I've never seen anything like this I mean we got more hamstring injuries than I've ever seen I heard uh, Brad that you have to try to hydrate too that's one of the things that <laughs> the trainers like to say too oh yeah you got to keep that water flowing in your body you know what I want to go back to Chicago the other day and I thought this is one of your best performances after the error of Alexei Ramirez you picked him up big time with that punch out of Jorge Soler Take us back to that situation and, and what was your mentality facing that situation with the bases loaded. I mean errors are going to happen. Um, you know we're just got to pick each other up and uh, big situation there eighth inning one running game just not give in to him right there. Um, just do whatever you can make quality pitches and pick your teammates up. That seems like the type of win for the Padres it really has maybe change the season it seems like you need a win like that against a very good team to kind of figure out where you are and how good your team could be. Yeah I mean it was a big series we went in there and took two out of three out of them. Uh, one of the best teams in the National League right now so um, yeah that was a really good really good team series uh, everybody played well hitting did well timely hitting and the pitching staff did really well. Brad thanks for joining us and continued success. Yeah thank you guys for having me.
Brad Hand joining us from the Padres dugout. Jose Perella pops it up in the infield. Jeanette will make the catch for the first out here of the third inning. Yeah, I thought you'd go back to that outing in Chicago, and it gave this whole team more confidence. Obviously, the adversity that had to deal with, but Brad Hand picking up Ramirez, which was devastated about that error. But then you see Brad Hand being unselfish yesterday, coming in knowing he had to go deep in the ball game and throwing four solid innings for Andy Green and these Padres. One out here in the third inning, and Adam Rosales, the batter. On the ground to the shortstop, VR sharply hit, but he is out number two. Eight in a row retired by Zach Davies to start the day for the Brewers right hander. Two down Cesar Vargas batting out of the nine spot Padres pitcher. 0 for five at the plate. Well, 36 pitches. That was his 10th ball. So for the Padres, they're going to have to start attacking early in the count. As you mentioned, a lot of strikes so far for him, right around the strike zone all day. Broken bat. It's going to get out of the way of the bat, makes the play. Davies throws to first. Nice acrobatic play by Davies and great concentration. Got the bat, the ball arriving at about the same time. And he's able to get Vargas at first base and to end the inning. Scoreless after two and a half from Milwaukee. Third inning back at Miller Park in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, with the Brewers coming up. Vargas back on the mound again. Roof is closed for the third time in four games. Actually, the first game played about half of it before the roof closed, and then they closed it up, and it's been closed ever since. It's been very cold outside. Yep. 44 degrees this time of year doesn't seem right. Does this it? is this is when you're going to go back to San Diego. Now oh. I know why. Exactly. I think my blood's already thinning out because I am freezing here. Yeah. I think I need some gloves. So yeah, near to the bottom of the third inning. And you know they got uh, Bob Euchre's uh, alarm clock that they're giving away coming up here. And of course the legend Bob Euchre who is with the Milwaukee Brewers and has been for so many years and this is his alarm clock that uh, they're giving away coming up. It's a pretty good look right there. He's going to get it for you. No, I think I can. You're, no. doing, you're doing great <laughs> with the clock. <laughs> I think it's broken. <laughs> Maybe put it's the batteries a, in. No, it worked before. Now it doesn't work. You, you do a great job with the clocks. No, it's not working. I got to get to where the alarm is at. 
but Bobby wakes you up is the gist of it. That would be great. Yeah. I know you're laughing on the inside. <laughs> Come on, Bob. I think the batteries died on this one. I hope the giveaway is better than. It's a start. sweet giveaway. Yeah. I mean, you see the Brewers colors, old school I colors. You want me to hit that? Get some batteries in there. Can we get some? It, it worked before. In the air to right, and Kemp is coming in to make the catch for the first out of the inning. But anyway, Bob yells at you to wake up in the morning. It's pretty cool. It's pretty it's clever because he has that, you know, get up, get up, get out of here. Yeah, he, it's his call. Which I like is that. Up here in left field above uh, Bernie's dugout. And then, of course, you have his statue here, too. Here it is. Get up, get up, get out of here. Gone. That wasn't good. That's what it does. I, I think it's pretty clever for the alarm clock, though. It's a great idea. It's time to get up. Would have been really cool if I could have figured out how to work it. We needed that this morning. Chris Carter with a swing and a foul tip. I think I just heard the bell. Carter gets into this to deep center. Jankowski will watch this lead. He's got that kind of power. Just showed it off his 11th home run of the year. Puts Milwaukee on top one to nothing, and Bernie Brewer can ride the slide. I think Chris Carter just heard the alarm clock. Right on cue. It's my it's fault. A, it's a loud sound off the bat. Looks like that cutter that was elevated. Right handers have hit 319 against Vargas coming into this game with one home run. That's the second. That'd be a good feeling for Carter. He knew it right away. So it's a 1 0 Milwaukee lead thanks to the home run. Kirk Neuenheis, the batter. He could not buy a timely hit late in last night's game and so far today until Carter's home run. They had the bases loaded with one out, could not score against Vargas in the second. And that's one way to score runs, hit it out of the yard. Very late in the swing is Neuenheis. Shifting on the right side of the Padres with Rosales coming to the right side. And a swing and a miss. It gets away from Norris, who's going to have to throw him out at first. Does successfully, and that is strikeout number four in the second time that Neuenheis has been down by way of the K. Well, we saw 12 of 14 first pitch strikes, and you're afforded to go out of the strike zone when you get ahead. Good pitching by Vargas. Two outs, Alex Presley. Flat out to left field in the second inning. First start of the series. Ryan Braun uh, banged up and he's got a wrist problem that's kept him out of the last two games. Much different looking lineup for the Brewers when you don't have Ryan Braun in the middle of it. Hitting 380 when the Padres arrived here to begin the four game series. You got to create different ways to score, maybe play a little bit more small ball. Chris Carter adding that home run. But luckily for the Padres, only a solo shot. There's a lineup. Minus Braun. Bouncing in and some footwork there to get out of the way by Presley. On the ground foul. Two and two here to Presley with Perez waiting on deck. Chris Carter is homer. 
delivering the first run of the game. By the lunge of Ramirez and in the left center. It's a base hit for Presley. Two strikes able to just stay with it and take it the other way. A two out single for Presley. Six hits now for Milwaukee. Playing Pepper up the middle of the diamond. Elevated curveball. And by Ramirez. Two down, Presley at first, and Hernan Perez coming up. He's single the center field in the second inning. One of the six hits that the Brewers have. The Padres have none. With Milwaukee batting here in the home half of the third inning. Presley back to the bag. But Don, when you have a long game like last night, 12 innings, over five hours, not going to take batting practice on a day a day game. So you'll come to the yard. You might go into the batting cages and do your routine, soft toss. But it's basically show and go today. Padres definitely look the part. But you can see that. Body language at times. They are very tired. This has been a grueling road trip. Is falling behind his next pitch will be his 60th of his outing through two and two thirds innings. Kashner on the DL. Line to center, but right at Jankowski. Makes the catch, it ends the inning. Chris Carter has gone deep and put the Brewers on top, one nothing. here in Milwaukee well it is absolutely imperative that Cesar Vargas go deep into this game Derek Norris told me before the game because Tehran Guerrero does not even arrive until this afternoon he was in AAA El Paso they played at home last night and there was only one flight from El Paso to Milwaukee he got on that but apparently I have been told he has not even arrived yet so it's going to be a quick haste once he lands gets to the ballpark and will probably come right in See that before, but uh, it's never easy. Yeah, first call up, and you're uh, you're coming during the game. It's got to be a little nerving, especially if you get into it. Top of the order for the Padres, Travis Jankowski leading it off after Davies has retired the first nine in order. 
four strikeouts four ground outs and a pop out it really hasn't featured too many change ups you see that last pitch was a change Winterfield mix it in a little more here second time through the order Yeah, when you're successful through the first time of the order and he has not giving up a hit yet you wonder if he even wants to give different looks. O2 pitch. It's high. Struck out Jankowski in the first inning. Travis getting his second look here at Zach Davies. Liner to left center field, and that's going to get down. A gapper out there to the track and the wall. Jankowski heading for two and maybe beyond. He's thinking three. Throws going there, and he's going to get there safely. Head first slide and Jankowski's got himself a triple. He really turns it on somewhere between first and third. He threw it into another gear. Got to love watching Travis Jankowski run the bases. He puts his head down but if you think think about the pitch it's that elevated pitch that he goes to the left center with that's a great approach. Sliding easily into third base. Well, you think about what you have to do in taking borderline pitches. That's the one two pitch that he took for a ball, buying himself another time and then taking advantage of that next one. Now, Derek Norris goes the other way, and a sinking liner is caught out there by Flores. Here comes Jankowski. The throw not going to be in time, and the Padres get a run. Sack line out for Norris on a ball that almost. Grab some grass out there but Flores makes the catch before it does. Not sure that's a play that uh, Domingo Santana is able to make out there in right field answering back for the Padres and watch out Travis Jankowski reads this ball. He watches it caught in right field by Flores and easily slides in for a nice sacrifice fly good hitting on both ends. And the speed of Jankowski is the difference maker there. One out Padres have a run and have tied it up. Well, Matt Kemp. Well, they could do nothing with Davies first time through. You get the triple by Jankowski solid contact by Norris. Picks up the sacrifice and just like that it's one to one. Kemp the other way down the right field line foul. Guerrero is here in uniform and could be used. Fresh off the flight, the only flight from El Paso. Congratulations, he's in the big leagues. Taking a look at his surroundings. Wide eyed, yeah. nerves. <laughs> Most home runs, the team's first 38 games, got Kemp with nine. Fouled off to the right out of play. A lot of Adrian Gonzalez on that list. Adrian was very good in the Padre uniform. Kemp a ground out to third first time up. Now a foul ball. Keeps the count of one and two. Good sign for Matt Kemp with those home runs. It took him 90 games to get to that level last year. Very productive early season for the big right hander. Badly fooled off balance strikes out. That's five K's now for Davies and two down here in the fourth inning. This is the changeup. Good arm speed on that changeup by Davies. Shifting are the Brewers on the right side here as they prepare for the arrival of Brett Wallace. Wallace struck out looking in the second inning. See Scooter Jeanette scooting back to short right. Nice. I see uh, where you're going with that. <laughs> you don't get that stuff everywhere. <laughs> Fox Sports San Diego. Drink it in. 
<laughs> 1 0 to Wallace. Kowski started the inning with a triple. The sack liner for Norris has tied the game. Kemp strikes out. Here's a 1 1. Straightens up Wallace. Just joining us, Wallace was not in the original starting lineup at first base. He was going to be starting at third base. Myers took himself out some forearm tightness just prior to the game. This right back where it came from and into center field and a hot shot off the bat of Wallace. Hey Davies with some fancy footwork to get out of the way of that line drive right back at him. Some guys who can make some contact talking to each other at first base. Watch your lips. Actually his shoelaces. A couple of former Astros. In a lineup at the same time at one point with the Houston Astros and. Wallace gains a lead, short lead, as Melvin Upton Jr. stands in. April May breakdown for Upton. 357 to this point. Slugging percentage at 619. Getting on base more, too. Well, productive outfield for the San Diego Padres. John Jay's success in center field and also Matt Kemp. Game break coming up. Marlins against the Nationals. On the ground up the middle, had it played pretty well. Jeanette will tag the bag at second and end the inning. The speed of Travis Jankowski. Got a triple, came around to score. Padres have tied the score one to one. Mike, thanks very much. As leading it off is Ramon Flores. Vargas right now, 14 first pitch strikes to the first 17 batters he's faced in this game. She's been ahead. Last time against Chicago, he wavered with that first pitch, first couple of pitches command. 
When you're relying on that cutter you have to work off the plate. That appearance of a strike and then getting off the plate on both sides. That's when. Vargas is at his best. Flores doubled his first time up. Well, six hits for Milwaukee off Vargas. Two two pitch. Fouled off to the left out play. Flores looks like he's going to that left field approach. Last time hit it in between the bag and Rosales for that double. See if they go inside after trying that one away. They did middle in and he fouled it off. Is going home after the game. They'll begin a three game series against the Giants on Tuesday night at Petco Park. Fly ball headed out towards shallow center. Jankowski racing in. Out goes Ramirez, and it's Alexei Ramirez. Well, arriving is Tyron Guerrero, and he goes out to the bullpen to meet his teammates. How about this group? They make you feel welcome yeah, in a hurry. Everybody is, hug. I love them see, showing the sensitive side. Saw the hugs in the dugout last night from Matt Kemp and then Tyron Guerrero welcome him to his first call up in the major leagues. The Padres are a huggy group. Yeah. I think we should hug again. I don't think so. Ground ball to shortstop Ramirez back of his uh, foot there kind of on the back foot throwing to first in time. Now James Shields making his way out there as well. Channing for Shields to come out. There's a group that has a good time. Yeah, and you you should should have a good time. Meshing them up, and you wonder if James Shields is out there just to boost the morale of a hardworking group. Let's think about this too. This would be his side day, so perhaps he's available. Yeah, and you know when you're dying for innings, those side sessions are definitely waited on. I don't think it's a big deal for James Shields to throw a side before this game, but. Potential of using him in this game, I would say, is very real. Two outs, Jonathan VR. VR doubled in the first, reached on a fielder's choice in the second inning. Fouls it back to our left. You know, and I guarantee James Shields last night as the game went on. He thought he was going to be possibly a first baseman with Will Myers going out. Guarantee he had his shoes on, his cleats, and probably asking in not only to play defensively, but also hit. It's the type of guy he is. He's, he loves competing. And that gets crazy. And if that went longer than the 12th inning, it was going to get pretty interesting. James Shields having fun with Doug Bockler, the bullpen coach. Jolted foul down the left field line. A long way by BR, but a foul ball. Flores popped out. Davies grounded out. Two outs here in the fourth inning. BR in a battle. And a swing and a miss. Vargas strikes him out and enjoys his first one, two, three inning of the ball game. Tied one to one.
Padres baseball brought to you by Sequan Casino. Sign up for the new Padres club card today. By Infinity. Visit your local San Diego area Infinity retailer for a test drive today. And by Mercury Insurance. We're on a mission to save you money. Log on to mercuryinsurance.com today. Well, today we are at Miller Park in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Game four of the four game series. About 40 something degrees outside. Roof closed. Very comfortable inside. And it's to the fifth inning we go. Alexei Ramirez leading it off for the Padres and badly fooled on that slow curveball. Ramirez struck out looking in the second. Five Ks today for Davies. I didn't mean to so quickly dismiss your hug invitation. It just <laughs> I felt like we hugged yesterday and that's enough. Yeah I think that's plenty. Yeah that's good. <laughs> Maybe on the plane. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Two one. I mean there's been so many hugs around yep. here. I just thought that it was appropriate. Started with Matt Kemp last night after. I can't remember it was his hit RBI it was his RBI single right? RBI the, single came yeah. around to score and a lot of love in the dugout line to center Neuenheis step to his right will make the catch all I'm asking for is just a, for you to be a team player in a situation where hugs are being thrown around all right. <laughs> there we go there we go That's good good okay all right I feel so much better it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Well, the first one yesterday was probably the best. I thought so too. I felt like that this was, was kind of forced. Very organic. <laughs> this was definitely premeditated. <laughs> one out here on the fifth. It took me an inning to think about it. Yeah, you dismissed me pretty quickly yeah, last time. How about no? <laughs> well, Perella popped out to second base in the third. Couple of hops out to Jeanette. And that's two outs here in the fifth inning. The Padres will have tomorrow off, and then they welcome in the San Francisco Giants for. Wait a minute, I got to follow the schedule. The Giants are coming in for three, and then you got the Dodgers in for three before it's back out on the road again. To San Francisco on off day, Arizona for three, and then at two game series home and home. Coming up with the Seattle Mariners. You're going to get to know the San Francisco Giants very well in the next week. And it looks like we are going to be looking at the best part of their rotation, too, in the three games at Petco Park. Uh, limbering up in the pen right now is Tyron Guerrero. Just arriving at the ballpark from his flight. Still got the jacket on, so seems to be just getting. Loosened up. He must have heard our weather report. It's pretty cold out there. Got off the plane, he was probably shocked. If I'm arriving in the big leagues, I'm getting everything that the equipment manager Spencer can get me. <laughs> no question. I want all this stuff. I want a jacket. And Spencer will please. Spencer Dolan will unload on you. I want a hat. I want as much as big league stuff as I can get. Yeah, swag. You know those sweet Mother's Day hats the other day that the yep. Padres wore all of Major League Baseball. First thing that Spencer Dolan the equipment manager said to me goes what size are you. Nice. It's pretty sweet. Fouled off down the right field line out of play. I think a world the world of the clubhouse guys and. All the guys throughout baseball but especially the Padres down there do a fabulous job. Work you know hours. you know you're a big leaguer. And they make it very easy. Broken bat. Bat headed out to shortstop and VR. Ball foul. And the bat handle left for Rosales. There's the business part of the bat out there with VR at shortstop. So Cesar Vargas blow up his bat. And now Rosales. That's considered getting in the kitchen.
Davies working that two seamer in on the hands after first few pitches were away. Wow. Heads up. He's ducking for cover. Rosales straightens it out, sends it to center, and Neuenheis back there to make the catch. He's played a good center field. Halfway through, tied up one to one. Here is game summary. Chris Carter with a long tape measure home run. With the Brewers on top, one to nothing. Padres coming right back. Jankowski with a triple. Head first slide, and then Derek Norris on the line drive sacrifice that scores Jankowski and ties the game. One one game to the bottom of the fifth. Scooter Jeanette will take a strike over the outside corner. That's pitch 75 for Cesar Vargas as he works here in the bottom of the fifth inning to the two, three, four hitters for Milwaukee Jeanette, Lucroy, and Carter. Jeanette has struck out looking and grounded back to the mound. Sun is shining outside coming through the panes of windows up to our right here inside Miller Park. There it is outside sunny again still on the cool side 44 degrees as we started today with the roof closed. Much different does this ballpark play with the roof closed if you recall well in the summertime it, it flies it's this is a good hitters ballpark because of the hitting background but when they open it up it seems to fly a little bit further. These cooler conditions you're seeing it you know saw Chris Carter's ball didn't really need any aid at all when they open it up and especially in the summertime. Definitely travels a little bit better. There is strike three and strikeout number six for Vargas. First out of the fifth inning. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you have come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD over 400 supported devices. It includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium, the number one app. For live baseball, blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. One out here in the fifth inning brings up Jonathan Lucroy, who is 0 for 2. Pitched on a fielder's choice in the first, flight out to right in the third. He homered last night, made things a little more interesting. 
just for that importance of the add on run for Melvin Upton Jr.'s homer. Otherwise, would have been tied heading to the 13th. A solo shot in the bottom half of the 12th. It's not the longest game of the year for the Padres at 5.04. Longest game was actually at home at Petco Park. The walk off home run for Melvin Upton Jr. And that was a 14 inning affair. Here's a fly ball to deep center field. Jankowski back, and that ball is gone. To the batter's eye in center field, Luke Roy has hit his fifth home run. Bernie Brewer on the slide. 2 1 Brewers. Well, the third home run allowed to right handed hitters by Cesar Vargas. Elevated. He crushed this baseball. It's off the middle light sign. Now Chris Carter who hit a shot earlier. So the Padres did it with a home run ball last night. Now it's the Brewers today flexing their muscles. Well 85 85th pitch for Cesar Vargas. His season high has been 92. See the MLB leaders most career home runs since 2013 Chris Carter. Wouldn't expect that. Hello. Now his home run was back in the third inning with one out bases empty. More towards right center. Going back, can't get it. Back over his head, plays the ricochet. Carter throws the brakes on about halfway to second base, and he retreats to first as Kent got it back in quickly. Long opposite field, single. Loud sound off the bat of Carter. He goes the other way, and this is hit over the head of Matt Kent. Plays the ball off nicely. Holding him to a single. It's a long single. One out Carter at first and Kirk Neuenheis. Showing butt drops it down the third baseline foul. And Rosales backed up at third. Thought he would try to punt his way on. Oh, two K's on the day. Why not? He's had a tough time figuring out Vargas today. Well, Vargas struck him out in the first, struck him out in the third, both times swinging. Swinging again, it's 0 and 2. Rosales runs over to the right side of the infield into the shift for the Padres here with two strikes on Neuenheis. Pitch count by inning right on that 90 mark. I think he's going to get extended today. Nobody warming in the pen for the Padres. Vargas' spot does come up first in the top of the sixth. So and two to begin now two and two. One home run for New and Heiss on the year. That's with Carter at first, one out, a run already in. That has put the Brewers on top here, two to one. A 
emergency swing there. Two runs, eight hits, no errors for the Brewers. They've left six. Padres, one run, two hits, no errors. They've left one. Neuenheis strikes out for the third time today. Seven strikeouts for Vargas, two down here in the fifth. It's time now for the San Diego fan of the game. And some Padres fans here at Miller Park in Milwaukee. Enjoying what they've seen so far in this series. Padres able to take two of the first three games. There's Alex Presley who singled to center field his last time up. Well, Vargas continues that success with first pitch strikes. Back to Vargas nice play reached across his body to grab it on the backhand and he throws out Presley. A home run for Jonathan Lucroy puts the Brewers on top 2-1. For the Padres, we head to the top half of the sixth inning. Time now for our cricket wireless something to smile about. And it's Matt Kemp and all the hugging that took place last night. Oh, cue in the love music. The hugs from Tyron Guerrero. Hugs everywhere. And obviously, special ones up here in the booth. We are so done with hugs. <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> Now it is Hector Sanchez batting in Cesar Vargas' spot here in the sixth inning. So Vargas done. Ended up with a season high 96 pitches. Well, 24 first pitch strikes out of 20 out of 24, which was a very good percentage. Fly ball left field and out there and left is Presley to make the catch for the first out here of the sixth inning. There is Kevin Quackenbush worked in last night's game, but then again, everybody worked in last <laughs> night's game. <laughs> Top of the order, Travis Jankowski coming up. It was his triple that set up the first run for San Diego in the fourth inning and scored on the line out to right by Norris. Aviz has retired five in a row. And a first pitch strike into Jankowski. And on the grass at third, Hernan Perez. And 
And there is Perez on the grass at third. Nice pick. Got to him in a hurry. And he throws out Jankowski. Just announced the first post game way back Wednesday concert at Petco Park will be live DJ set by DJ Snoop Adelic presented by Budweiser June 8th after the 1240 Padres game against the Braves come for the baseball action and stay for the post game performance by DJ Snoop Adelic tickets are Padres.com slash promotions Snoop Doggy Dog that's Snoop <laughs> Snoop a loop <laughs> can't wait to see Snoop. <laughs> What is that? Are we home? You know we're home. So two down. You know Snoop a loop. I never had the chance to meet Snoop, <laughs> but I would love to meet Snoop. Snoop, Snoop a loop. <laughs> Snoop a delic. Yeah. Have you seen Snoop? I have not. Seen him on plenty of stuff around. New old pitch is a strike over the outside corner. Our producer, Mark Max Michelak, is yeah. a big fan. Huge. Breaking ball. Throw a couple different speeds in this game by Davies. That's the slow one, and he falls behind three and one. Morris made solid contact last time up. Twelve year old Zach Davies. <laughs> it's unbelievable. This one is down the right field line and foul. It's like that movie. Kidder becomes the manager of the Minnesota yeah, Twins. Check his ID. Good, yeah. Well, he is acting the part. Yeah, he's only given up two hits and one run on the day. Through five and two-thirds innings. Pitch 84 coming up. Line to cut. Chris Carter lunging to the second base side of first has got it. He's doing it all. He's got himself a home run and now a good defensive play and a hot shot off the bat of Norris. To the bottom of the sixth we go 2 1 Milwaukee. of the trade it focuses on the defensive play of Sanchez last night you can see was called not only once but twice had a lot of impact on the game last night the Padres come in and finish a big win catchers interference I haven't seen too many times it happening once but let alone twice last night 
I've gone entire seasons without seeing it, and then you see it twice in the same game is unbelievable. Pitching change brought to you by Elko and Ford. As Kevin Quackenbush, who pitched in last night's game, appears in his 21st game here today. Well, only a third of an inning last night. Gave up two runs, two earned runs. And for Kevin Quackenbush, he has half has to go an inning plus today. Vargas turning in a five inning effort, eight hits, two runs. Didn't walk anybody, struck out seven through 96 pitches. I think Andy Green would have preferred that Vargas get a little deeper into this game than he did today. Hernan Perez leading it off. A single to center in the second, lined out to center in the third. Strike two. The runs allowed last night by Quackenbush snapped a streak of nine straight outings without allowing a run. Still opponents only hitting at 194 against him. It's actually better against lefties than he is right handers. 182 against left handed batters, 200 for right handed batters. Well, it has that quick delivery that gets on you, that spin rate that so many people talk about, but also that overhand breaking ball comes into play against left handers. Full count. Talking about Snoop a loop. Billy Joel performed yeah. on Petco Park last night. I heard it was a tremendous concert. Have you seen, seen Billy? I've seen him twice. I have not seen him. Outstanding. Oh, what a concert last night. I heard it was a great performance. 3 2 towards right center field. Kemp on the run. Not going to get there. It's up the alley. Perez will cruise into second base with a stand up double to open up the sixth inning. Second hit of the day for the Brewers third baseman. Well, just going with the pitch. The pitch was actually down but with the three two count. Just hunting that fastball. Perez at second Ramon Flores coming up one for two. Right fielder for Milwaukee doubled in the second popped out short in the fourth. Now take strike one. Had a one nothing lead on the Carter home run sack fly for Norris the Padres in the fourth tied the game one one and Luke Roy homering to center field solo shot has put the Brewers back on top two one now looking for more as Quackenbush gets a strike in there on the corner I love Quackenbush pounding that outside part of the plate situation where Flores would love to hit that ball to the right side advancing Perez to third. Pitcher spot is next. Davies is out there right now, but you get action for the first time in the pen from Milwaukee is Boyer is up. Ball gets away, headed to third is Perez, and he'll get there. Blocked by Norris, but a little bit up the first baseline, and he can't get it to third in time. Perez aggressively now just 90 feet away. Well, second base, you can read the signs, and they think he saw that it was a curveball. A good read in the dirt. Curveball, and you can benefit from seeing that down in the strike zone and advancing to third base, infield in for the Padres. Flores slaps it foul.
See if he goes to that breaking ball. High fastball. Perez at third base. Nobody out here in the sixth inning and a payoff pitch. Foul back. Quackenbush uh, had quite the string going up until last night. Consecutive scoreless appearances. Been nine straight and encompassed six and a third innings. And he walks Flores. So first and third now, nobody out. It's just the first walk allowed by Padres pitching today. Andy Green, the manager, coming out. Not Darren Balsley. Nobody warming in the pen, so just a conversation. Yeah, this could be a motivational speech, too. Not showing that put away pitch for Kevin Quackenbush. Last night looked a little tentative at times. Everyone knows this bullpen is grinding it out. Trying to figure out what you're going to do defensively. The ball takes you to a double play. You got to take that. Padres haven't scored many runs today, so that'll indicate what they're going to try to do defensively to get Kevin Quackenbush on board. First and third, nobody out. And Davies will hit for himself. Singled in the second, grounded to short in the fourth inning. Only two career hits for Davies, one today, putting on the bunt. Fouled it off, or did he? Yeah, he did. They were telling Flores to take second base, but it was a foul tip. Ball and yes, he gets a piece of that. Third base coach had yelled across at Forrest to take second base. Didn't think he did. Owen oh won the count. Let's see if he's squaring again. He is, and he gets it down. Rosales looks the runner back and then fires to first base through a seed. Taking second is Flores, remaining at third is Perez, one out. Well, Davies gets the bunt down. You see to Rosales, and he has to look Perez down. But the arm strength of Rosales is the benefit in this play, defensively covering it. Perel is at first base and easily the out at first. Well played. Second and third, one out, not out of the woods yet. Here's VR. Fastball straightens him up, up and in. Doubled in the first, reached on the fielder's choice in the second, struck out swinging in the fourth inning. Pitch a game break with Mike Pomerant shortly. Pirates and Cubs today, wrapping up that series. Late swing and a foul ball. Pretty good series for VR. Seven for 12. Popped up. Rosales by the Padres. Dug out. Has got to play, and he makes it. Nice play by Rosales. You know, the short fencing about rib high leans in and makes the grab. You could hear the help from the dugout saying he's had room. And helping it out. You see him going over there having a flash look at how much room he has. But his teammates helping him out. That's a big out and a big pitch by Kevin Quackenbush. Two down, second and third, and now it's Scooter Jeanette. 
Second baseman for Milwaukee. Start with a double by Perez. The walk for Flores. Perez took third on the wild pitch, second and third, but a ground out and a foul out. Rockenbush and out away from getting out of it. Evens are counted one and one. Trying to keep this a one run deficit right now for the Padres. On the ground foul. Well, Jeanette has shown that he will go out of the strike zone with that curveball. Plenty of options. Let's see if they go upstairs with the fastball or go right back to that breaking ball. Breaking ball in the dirt. Striking out, but getting thrown out at first base is Jeanette, and out of the jam is Quackenbush. The meeting for Andy Green worked out very well. It's 2 on Milwaukee. I do indeed. Mike had the chance to call that game. And uh, John Lester, outstanding. He uh, struck out Alberto Callaspo to end that no hitter. Sorry about calling a no hitter. <laughs> Call three. That's why we brought you over. <laughs> Gotta get one here in SD. We are starving for it. Uh, Deo Nomo. My first game. Your first game? Yeah. Uh, what was that like? That was unbelievable. I could have done without it, to be honest with you. A little stressful. Yeah, I was just trying to get my first game out of the way, and unless doing that. But anyway, yeah, Deo Nomo, uh, John Lester, and Clay Buckholtz, so wow. all no hitters. Now Davies pitching well here into the seventh inning. There's a one run lead, and working to Matt Kemp, who's jumped ahead of him one and two. Swing and a miss, and Kemp strikes out. Second time he's done that today. That's six strikeouts now for Zach Davies. 
A back to back strikeouts for Kemp and both on the changeup with two strikes. Good location and good movement. One out in the seventh. Eight in a row now retired by Davies and it brings up Brett Wallace. Strike out a single today for the Padres first baseman. Some forearm stiffness kept Myers from making the start today late scratch so Wallace was originally scheduled to play third and across the diamond to first base. Understand that John Lester has given up a hit with one out in the seventh inning, so the no hitter not happening today for the Cubs lefty. Yeah, I think Lester needed you to call that game <laughs> instead of Len, Len Casper. One two pitch. What has Davies done today to keep the Padres at bay? A lot of movement, a lot of different looks. He has peppered the outside part of the plate, also inside with a two seam movement. But he stayed out of the middle of the plate. Very late timeout call. You see, it, it's not always done with velocity. Location is very intimidating, especially when you can move the ball. And stay off the barrel of the bats. Sounds pretty simple, but executing your pitches and being consistent with that delivery, he has been much better in May. Another timeout call. Now he's working quickly and the Padres are trying to break up that rhythm a little bit by stepping out as much as they can and he's getting it and throwing it for the most part here today and that's you have to do that you have to try to break up his rhythm but he feels comfortable with all of his pitches he hasn't had to go to that change up too many times and when he has you see that action it's really benefited him. Fly ball center field Neuenheis going back towards the track at the wall that ball is gone. Home run for Brett Wallace ties this game at two. Third home run of the year for Wallace and the Padres have tied it up. Well Don he started this series 0 for 12. Last at bat he hits that bullet up the box. I think that really set him back into a much better hitting position. Two strike hitting and down and away takes this the opposite way. This three run shot in Chicago was to the opposite way as well. That's it for Davies. He leaves to a standing ovation. They liked what he did, but it's a 2 2 ball game now, thanks to Brett Wallace.
Bill Howe play of the game. And how about Brett Wallace tying this game? Out to left center field out of the yard. Uh, Davies stayed out of the middle of the strike zone until Brett Wallace deposits that to left center. So two to two, Blaine Boyer, the new pitcher in. Former Padre in his 16th appearance of the year. Three pitch pitcher, fastball, slider, and curveball. Will show the changeup only to left handers at times. Upton fouls it back, one out, base is empty. So Davies goes six and a third innings, only three hits, two runs. Didn't walk anybody, struck out six, and that tied a career high for him. Last time he did it was also against the Padres. September 30th of last year, did it against San Diego. Doing it again here today, but leaves with a no decision. And this is sharply hit through the left side into left field, a base hit for Melvin Upton Jr. Welcomes Blaine Boyer into the game. Alexei Ramirez he struck out looking in the second, flying out to center in the fifth. We're a veteran from Milton, Georgia. Originally a third round draft pick by the Atlanta Braves back in 2000. Thank you. Brave from 2005 through 2009. Stops in St. Louis, Arizona, New York Mets, San Diego, last year, Minnesota. 68 appearances out of the Twins pen last year. Trying to keep Upton close at first base. Saw Melvin with a stolen base last night. Aggressive on the base pass, and why not here? One out, try to get in scoring position. High strike call. Ramirez didn't like it. Ryan booked her up in the pen right now for the Padres. Bigger lead over there at first base now for Upton. He stretched it out a little bit. Noticing was Boyer, and he checks on him again. Ramirez swings away and pops it up. Foul ground down from first is Chris Carter. And he'll make the catch for the second out here of the seventh inning. A greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. Madison Bumgarner is going to be the first pitcher of the three-game series coming up between the Padres and the Giants. Bumgarner making his ninth start. He's four and two. Johnny Cueto saw in San Francisco. First time in a Giants uniform. He'll be making his ninth start, five and one. And Jeff Samarja, his ninth start already has five wins, five and two. Well, potent Giants pitching staff, and you're probably going to see two of those with the back to back series. Home and road. And for the Padres, they have no idea who's going to pitch those three games. Yeah. <laughs> this TBA right now for. All three days. I think they reset themselves tomorrow, especially with the off day.
two outs Upton at first base and Jose Perella. All for two today he's popped out to second base grounded out to second base and full time scooter Jeanette up to the task. Throw over and Upton was headed in the wrong direction initially. Swing and a miss. All on a strike. Well, aggressive swing by Perella. Why not? They're paying attention to Melvin Upton Jr. at first base. You look for that fastball, and he got it. Challenging times for Darren Balzer, the pitching coach for the Padres, with another having to juggle the staff right now. Morella fouls it off to the right. And he's down one and two. Kemp struck out to begin the inning. Brett Wallace, a home run to left center field. Chase Davies from the game. The pitcher Blaine Boyer gives up a single to Melvin up to Jr. It's Alexei Ramirez to pop out to the first baseman Carter. Now another check on Upton who's back to the bag. Zips it inside at 92. Saw so Boyer go with the slide step there. Some pitchers will go with the slide step and they will lack the command. Perella hits it on the ground, but right to Jeanette. He'll flip the second for the force out that ends the top of the seventh inning. Seventh inning stretch from Milwaukee. Thanks to Brett Wallace, it's tied 2 2.
Diego presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by Petco, your complete pet store. By Tough Turtle Turf, the industry's only lifetime turf. And by Sony, the leader of 4K Ultra HD. Back in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. All kinds of mascots, all kinds of stuff. You got Barrel Man. How about the moves on Barrel Man? So I Hank the Dog. You got Bernie Brewer. By the way, what is the deal with uh, Bernie Brewer? I mean, basically the home run happens. He goes down the slide. It's kind of it. I, I, yeah, I guess. I mean, the slide really indicates the homer. But I, I don't know. I'm, I, I tried to figure that out while I was here. He just hangs out there waiting for home runs. That's it. It's a sweet caterpillar going across yeah. his lip, too. <laughs> He's got his area up there. People can go visit him. And then we've seen a couple home runs in the series. He rides the slide, and that's it. And did you notice that in the visitor's clubhouse, Padres clubhouse, there is a sign in there that says you are not allowed to ride the slide. Did you know that? They are prohibiting visiting teams from going on Bernie's slide. Yeah, we actually had one of our sideline reporters do a special on it a few years ago. And and she wore her black shoes down the slide. Actually made some marks on the wow. slide. I don't think they like that too much. Bernie doesn't like that. But he's got a helper up there. Maybe he pushes him down the slide. See him behind there? Yep. I'd like to push you down the slide. <laughs> <laughs> But the sign indicates you can't go down the slide. Just because I wouldn't hug you before. Is that what this is about? I, I, I felt like it was just, it was kind of pushed on us. Wow. I think we should do, we'll, we'll have a better flight on the way back. Okay. I'm going to push you down that slide. Jonathan Lucroy leads it off here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Opposite field, and it's a base hit. And Kemp able to pick it. He'll get it back in, but Lucroy has got his second hit of the day. Leadoff single here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Our game presented in HD by Sony. Comes Chris Carter. Strikeout victim in the first, a home run to right center in the third. And single to right in the fifth, so a two hit day. 11th home run, 25th RBI. Outfield straight away. LaCroix held on to first base by Brett Wallace. Think about important shutdown innings for the Padres. This is one of them. You have to add home run by Wallace tying the ball game putting up a zero and giving your offense another opportunity to get that lead. Quackenbush had given up a double and a walk upon his arrival in the sixth inning. Proceeded to get Davies to ground out VR to foul out and Jeanette to strike out and Got out of that inning unscathed, although it was a taxing inning. Now lead off single here in the seventh, and another check on Lucroy. In tight and it's two and two. A big situation here for the Padres. Chris Carter has hit into eight double plays on the year. He is that, a candidate. See that elevated pitch. Let's see if he goes to the breaking ball or even a fastball located down and away. Right now, Quackenbush has thrown an even 30 pitches since coming into this game. Full count now. 
Well, with the swing and miss in Chris Carter's game and Lucroy not having a lot of speed, I would think he would stay at first base. Line towards the gap in left center. This is trouble. One hops the wall. The ricochet is nasty out towards Jankowski. Lucroy is going to try and score all the way from first. He will. And the Brewers will take a 3 2 lead. Gapper for Carter out to left center. And Milwaukee on top again. We see Carter, RBI situation. Jankowski on the right side of second base, and this is shopped into the gap in left center. Ricocheting to the center field wall, which made it very difficult for Jankowski to hit the cutoff. Andy Green on his way to the mound. Quackenbush has been charged with a run. Runs in two straight outings for him now as he departs. It is three to two, Milwaukee on top now. And this copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the San Diego Padres may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Into the game here for the Padres is Ryan Book during his 19th game. Want to know the 0 0.53 earned run average. Lefties are just 0 53 against him. I'm going to get a pinch hitter here. Domingo Santana pinch hitting for Neuenhaus, who had struck out three times. Strike one. Now with those numbers against left handers, that's the reason why Craig Council wants Santana up against Bookter. Booker picked up the save on game earlier this series, a left-hander. As the pitch in there for a strike, Fernando Rodney was not available. In action of the pen right now. Blazik warming again. Seen him in the last two games for Milwaukee. Strike three call Santana strikes out looking and that's the first out here of the seventh inning. Saw Bookter with two walks in his outing last night in, in just a third of an inning but the location much better today. Painting that inside corner against Santana. Takes over for Quackenbush who is responsible for Carter at second base. Here is Alex Presley. 
is fly to left single to center and grounded back to the mound. Bush went an inning plus giving up three hits so far charged with one run he walked a batter and struck out a batter and after nine straight scoreless appearances has given up runs in each of the last two last night and today. Presley to left Upton going back towards the track at the wall and he'll make the catch right in front of the wall. Fires it back in. That ball was moving around on him and made an adjustment late. Makes the grab right in front of the wall for the second out. Remaining at second is Carter, but with two down. Just looks so comfortable in left field, even with a route that really wasn't to the baseball, but the adjustment. Making that catch at the wall. Very nice by Melvin. Two outs Carter at second and Hernan Perez. What a difference the corner outfield is too. Talking about hooking, slicing, all kinds of things that he did not have to deal with in center. Yeah, center field, it's a, it's an easy read off the bat. You know exactly where it's going. On the corners, it tends to go towards the foul line. Even if it's in the gap off that left-handed bat, you can see it curling towards that line. This gives you fits because your first read in the outfield is that step. And your, your initial step takes you to that route, but you're adjusting. Melvin Upton Jr. looks very comfortable in left fit left field because he's taking a lot of reps out there. Strike on the outside corner. But defensively for the Padres that really has been the difference maker this year. See the outfield alignment. Jankowski is over protecting that right field area exposing Melvin to a greater area to cover elevates and Perez chases the strike out nice job by Bookter a run for the Brewers who are headed to the eighth with Milwaukee on top three two.
Blazik into the game here for Milwaukee. 19th appearance. Want to know the 2.50 earned run average. Well, he has not allowed a run over his last six appearances. He's been excellent for Craig Council out of the bullpen as of late. Now changes as Flores moves from right field to center field. Santana stays in the game in right. And a check swing foul. Look out behind the Brewers dugout. Carlos Beltran Hall of Famer for you. That's a tough one. I would I would need to look. Right down the line at his numbers. Yeah I think you go back to that postseason that he had with the Houston Astros where he had nine home runs in the postseason. Obviously a, a fabulous career as a switch hitter 400 home runs is legitimate but I I don't I don't see him as a Hall of Famer. Adam Rosales 0 for 2 in the game. There's that fine line. Yeah I think you have to do something spectacular. Some of those numbers have to pop out especially this this day and age where the numbers are really eye popping. Trevor's going in 100 percent. So it fouled off to the right. I think a lot of people were saying how important it was for Trevor to have a good first year voting wise and he was right on that cusp. So I, I think it's a no brainer this year. I thought he was a first ballot Hall of Famer but I can understand why. You know inserting closers this day day and age as a Hall of Famer. Fly ball shallow center it's Jeanette the second baseman backpedaling to the outfield lawn to make the catch. First out of the eighth. I know a lot of people felt. That Trevor had a huge impact here in Milwaukee it was very strange to see him out of a Padre uniform for me. But having him come over here and impact guys I understand how important he is as a teammate. But you look at the numbers and Trevor Hoffman. Was flat out dominating. And I, I think he and. And Rivera are really identified the closers role. Top of our action out there a little unusual it is James Shields. Mentioned his side day normally but. That side day may have him in the game or he may just be tossing. Having that side day right now. Blazik, the third arm used by Craig Council today. As Christian Bethencourt pinch hits here in the pitcher's spot, 216, three homers, six RBIs. Look out. Whoa. Padres trailing by a run as they bat here with one out in the eighth. Well, the Padres carrying three catchers. You get the feeling you're going to see Bethencourt hitting a little more often, getting a chance, and that's why he can hit. Here's a base hit the other way. And aboard with one out, a pinch hit single here for Bethencourt in the eighth. And he has earned those opportunities. The three catcher situation, why not? Seen the big home run on this road trip in Chicago and then going the other way. Very impressive. One out one on top of the order. Travis Jankowski coming up. Struck out in the first tripled in the fourth and scored. Grounded out to third base in the sixth inning. So from the top spot in the Padres order today one for three. Jumping on the first pitch and fouling it back. Good swing by Jankowski. But the speed on the triple back in the fourth inning. Don't see many triples to the left center gap. You can see him picking them up and putting them down. Nice head first slide in the third. Line to center field and that's going to get in for a base hit. Bethencourt will stop at second as Flores will get it back in and 
The Padres have put together back to back base hits with one out here in the eighth. Well, back to back starts for Jankowski. It's a mistake by Blazek, and he, into center field goes the single, and the Padres have something going on. Two on, one out, and Derek Norris, the batter. Grounded out to short in the first. A sacrifice fly in the fourth, lined out to first base in the sixth inning. Beth and Court at second, Jankowski at first. Norris to center field. Back goes Flores. And over to make the catch. Tagging at second is Beth and Court. The throw is not going to be in time cut off. And the tying run 90 feet away now with two outs as Norris flies out to center. It's up to Matt Kemp. Well, two outs runners in scoring position on the year two for five two home runs. Three hits yesterday but today has punched out twice in his last two at bats. It's a big at bat for the Padres. Court 90 feet away at third base with Jankowski at first. The battle, Michael Blazik and Matt Kemp with two outs here in the eighth inning. Tying run at third. Ball one. That's how the strikeouts for Kemp's also grounded out to third as part of an 0 for 3 today. Three on the left side, and you see the outfield positioned on that left center gap. He's ahead, two and zero. Oh. Good hitters count here now for Kemp. In the air foul off to the right. That pitch was away from him. And he fouls it off down the right field line. First and third, two down. Matt Kemp with a count of two and one. Fly ball to right field for Kemp down the line towards the pole and that ball is going to go foul. Just to the right of the pole down there. A slice. Well last two at bats Matt has been exposed to that changeup. Getting into pitchers counts today. Blazik likes to go to that slider. Line to center field incoming is Flores and he'll make the catch. Hit it on the button but he's out number three. Padres strand a pair trail by a run.
as we head to the bottom of the eighth. You jumping around? Not right now. I can't jump around. I'll pull a hamstring. Fans have been jumping around for the better part of the last 90 seconds while you're away. <laughs> Fernando Rodney. Comes the fourth Padres pitcher of the day. Oh, he has pitched so well out of the bullpen, especially in saves opportunities. This is not a save opportunity. Just try to keep the Padres close. That opportunity to snatch one back in the ninth. Nice job by Ryan Buchter. As he came in with a runner at second base, nobody out in the seventh inning, proceeded to strike out the pinch hitter Santana. Presley to fly out, Perez to strike out, and kept it a one run deficit. Right now, Kevin Quackenbush is on the hook for the Padres. Beth Accord stays in the game to do the catching after he pinch hit in the pitcher spot as part of the double switch. Ramon Flores, who moved from right field to center field defensively, leads it off here in the eighth. Fly ball left field. Upton going back. Pedaling to the edge of the track to make the catch. One down in the eighth. Colin Walsh is going to pitch hit in the pitcher spot. We've seen this a few different times in this four game series. Walsh off the bench into the game with one out in the eighth. No 95 average, no homers, two runs batted in. 33rd game that he's participated in this year. Riding anywhere from 94 to 96 with a fastball. Change up 81 to 83. Yeah, that differential is devastating to hitters. They have to pick their poison. Here's the equalizer right there with the good feel of the changeup. Here comes another one. Now it drops in there for strike three. 81 miles an hour in the second out of the eighth. Time now for the Cholula flamethrower. And for the Padres closer, Fernando Rodney, 94. That's some. Cheese, it's hot sauce. Well, he can, he's got hotter sauce, actually. Two down to the eighth, and Jonathan VR. Shortstop, one for four in this game. VR with a double back in the first inning. That was off Cesar Vargas. Just joining us, Vargas started the game for the Padres five innings through 96 pitches in those five innings. Eight hits, couple of runs, didn't walk anybody, struck out seven. VR has something in his right eye. Two outs in the eighth inning. Fastball grabs his attention out of the zone and up. Jeffress getting ready in the pen, the closer for the Brewers. He will be dealing with Wallace, Upton, and Ramirez, the scheduled trio in the ninth. Right now, it's a one run deficit for the Padres. Strike two. Such a good feel for that changeup. He can throw it for a strike when he wants to, but also throw it a little bit harder, get that downward movement for the swing and miss. Swing and a miss, and the fastball at 96, hardest one he threw, he just threw by VR. On to the ninth. Padres need to run to tie, trailing 3 2.
junior star of the game and how about the starter Zach Davies six and a third two runs struck out six didn't walk anybody the six strikeouts ties a career high. They kept the Padres quiet through six and a third. Twenty three year old had everything going today the pinpoint control only the home run off Wallace really made it a depressing day for Davies. Jeremy Jeffress into the game the closer who is nine out of nine and save opportunities on the year. You see the lefties hitting a good clip 346. Much better against the righties. We got Brett Wallace of course leading it off the lefty coming up. Now came into the, this year with only one career save. The injury to Will Smith during spring training he has assumed the clo closing duties. Today with a home run off Davies. Tie the game two to two in the seventh inning. Home run number three of the year for Brett Wallace. A shift on him here on the right side. Also has a single today, so two for three as he takes strike one. Foul off to the left, and it's quickly 0 and 2. Wallace with Melvin Upton Jr. waiting on deck. Ninth inning trailing by a run. Swing and a miss. Wallace strikes out. One down in the ninth. Time now for the in the driver's seat brought to you by Kia. Chris Carter having a big game today. Came off the bench last night, but today for Carter, a home run in the third inning. Single in the fifth, double in the seventh. He's driven in a couple runs, has a home run and a good defensive play at first base. A three for four showing, and 22 extra base hits on the year. Strike one to Upton. Melvin struck out in the second, grounded into a fielder's choice in the fourth, single to left in the seventh. On the ground to first base Carter is going to take it a long way himself to tag the bag and the Padres are down to their last out. Two down and Alexei Ramirez coming up. Crowd standing in Milwaukee. <laughs> Jeffress trying to get his tenth save. Ramirez swings and misses. Jeffress featuring that 95 mile an hour fastball. Had that riding action on that fastball as well. Loves throwing into those right handers. In the air towards right center field. Late break for Santana. He loses it in the lights. It gets by him. Heading for second base is Ramirez. He'll get there as losing it in the light bank was Santana in right, and it gets by him, and the Padres are still very much alive. Turned his head the last minute. Yeah, this is an easy fly ball to right field, and he took a nonchalant approach to this ball. Ball goes in the lights as you can see but that's a mistake by the right fielder. The Padres need to capitalize. 
That's got to drive Craig Council, the manager of the Brewers, crazy. Now Perella coming up. That's Santana pinch hit and coming to the game mid game and now defensively in right field Flores who had made a nice play out there earlier was not there this time. Tying run in scoring position two down Perella the batter. Ball one. Strike one, right at the bottom of the zone. A good location by Jeffress. Big thing here for the Padres. Ramirez got to get a good secondary lead off a second. Defensively for the Brewers, they're going to hold their ground. Two and one. 96 that time on the fastball. Shields in case in the pen. Two out double for Ramirez. He's at second base and the ball misplayed lost in the lights by Domingo Santana. Sets up a 2 1 pitch to Perella. Perella hits it on the ground to first. Carter's got it over to cover as Jefferson. That's that. The Brewers hold on to win this ball game. Padres split the four game series with Milwaukee. And a frustrating day today as we send it to Mike Pomerantz.